I don't think I'm exaggerating when I say that Green Hell is one of the toughest survival games you'll ever play. Now it's available on Xbox and PlayStation, I want to give you top 10 tips in 10 minutes so you can get prepared or help you a little bit as you begin this fantastic Amazonian jungle survival experience. So like if you find it useful, let's go. Don't dawdle around in the first stages on the campsite with the tent. Any of the items that you find here you won't necessarily have with you when you start the next stage. So don't bother going and harvesting a bunch of resources or trying to build anything in this place. Wait until you actually get first the first chunk of story which should take you around 25 to 30 minutes. Of course it's basically a tutorial that will teach you how to play but there are some instances where you think it might be worth gathering resources or supplies and it's just not possible to take that with you to the next stage. Which is a real shame because I would have loved to have had a machete to get started with in Green Hell but nope you're going to have to start right from the very beginning. Water is a real issue in the game at the early stages if you're not paying enough attention to coconuts. You'll find these dotted around the jungle so you go ahead and grab them and always attack them so you get the actual shell. Have a little drink, make sure obviously if you don't need to you just take it with you and you keep it for later but it's usually worth it. Then break it open and go ahead and eat or the coconut chunks inside. But don't leave the shells there, take them with you as these are going to be bowls for water. There are different seasons in Green Hell and if you're playing in survival mode you may have to really find other ways to get water like building a water collector or going ahead and getting a water purifier. But in the early stages this will do you fine. Have maybe two coconuts, so four shells, laying on the ground and every time it rains it's going to fill up and you'll usually get 10 water hydration points whenever it's filled up. You can go ahead and drink it also if you're desperate and it hasn't filled up completely you'll still get a couple. But this is a great way to maintain your water needs early in the game, like I said, until you've got enough materials to build water collectors. You can go ahead and drink all the water that you find in rivers. Some rivers will be safe to drink, but most won't be. They will give you a risk of getting an infection, and that's one of the easiest killers in the game. So only really use the water in the rivers to wash yourself. I could probably do a top 10 tips on just curing all the illnesses and afflictions that you'll come across in Green Hell. It's the main focus of the game, getting rid of nasty things like these, worms, as well as a whole host of other stuff that you've got to contend with. But this is definitely one of the nastiest looking ones. What you'll need to make is a bone needle. Now you'll find plenty of bones on carcasses in and around and you may sometimes get bones when you pretty much harvest some of the creatures that you've got also. But one mistake I make early on whenever I boot up Green Hell is I forget to bandage my wounds. It's not just good enough to use the bone little needle to take out the worm. You then have to put a bandage on it as well. Otherwise you increase the chances of getting infection. And that leads to tip four. Make lots of bandages. Always have one of the six different types as soon as you're able to make them. Yes, you heard me, the six different types of bandages you can make that treat all sorts of different afflictions. Lily dressings, ash, honey, tobacco, goliath, as well as obviously a normal leaf bandage. They're all available in the game and they all do different things. Now I've said focus on bandages even to cover the wounds when you've got things like worms out but it doesn't guarantee that you won't get an infection. In fact leaf bandages on their own will give you a more of a chance of getting an infection than some of the other ones. So that's why it's important that you always have one of every kind as you come across all the different types. A normal leaf bandage will heal you but it will take a bit longer and as I said it's got more chance to give you infection. You can make bandages out of ash and these are good particularly for animal attacks. Whenever you get lacerations you'll see the marks clearly use an ash bandage. Tobacco is going to cure most poisons like rattlesnake, Brazilian spiders, the goliath and scorpion and stingray attacks. Them free bandages are the ones that you'll probably be having access to early game and you'll be using the most. There are ones like honey but they are a bit harder to come by but they are also some of the best and heal almost any affliction. I will do a detailed guide on where to find all the resources to make all of these bandages and any other healing items. When it comes to food you've got to be a bit more complex in keeping up your protein, your fats and obviously your carbohydrates up. So making sure you get a good intake of food is key. Things like bananas and fruits that you find in the jungles. But be warned these spoil pretty quickly so try not to gather too many unless you actually need them. Just try and mark out where they are so you can return and grab them. When you first arrive at the abandoned camp or tribe huts you need to go ahead and use the dryer that's there if it isn't raining already. 
This can be done before you make your first base camp and sleep, and you might just have enough time to get some food going. It does take quite a while to dry food, but it's definitely a lot better than just simply cooking it. Cooked food on a fire will give you two days worth before it starts spoiling, whereas dried food lasts up to five days. Now you won't get as much nutrition from dried food, but it's still worth doing if you get the opportunity. If it does start raining, build a tiny little shelter over a dryer, or if you come into contact with bamboo early in the game, build a bamboo dryer instead, and they're much smaller and you can put them in different places. It takes between 24 and 26 hours for most meat to dry, and the minute it's dried, that's when the five day timer kicks in, not when you take it off from the dryer. You may look at the meat and it looks okay four days in, but as soon as you take it off after that fifth day, it will decompose in your hands. So make sure you keep track, take the meat off as soon as you see it's pretty much dried. With that comes another little tip, keep whole birds whole. Don't go ahead and cook or dismantle them or harvest them until you actually need them. This is pretty much true of most things you'll find like fruit and other items. Keep them until you absolutely need them. Always eat the most freshest stuff first. As far as I'm aware, since the last time I played it, as long as you don't harvest the bodies, they will stay much fresher and then you only harvest them when you need to. Just make sure you always wash your hands afterwards in some water. And sticking with food, mushrooms are mostly your friends. In fact, near enough, all the mushrooms you'll come across in the early stages of the game are going to be stuff that's going to benefit you. So make sure you eat all the yellow ones and any orange ones that you find. They also have some properties that are beneficial extra. The orange ones that you find on trees, they will give you the opportunity to cure some infections. I could honestly do another guide just on mushrooms, which I will, but avoid this one. You'll find plenty of these like spider white mushroom types in the first stages. It will give you some carbohydrates, but at the risk of getting food poisoning. Stick to all the other yellow and orange more mushrooms in the early stages and you should be good. Avoid this one. So I told you guys to rush through the first tutorial stages, but what next? Well, you're meant to make the hallucinogenic potion at the pot and you need two different types of plant or fauna to actually make it. Now the game tells you what to look for and where to get it, so I won't spoil that fun for you. But I will say this, if you do make this, it progresses the next part of the story and it really starts to open up the map where you've got different choices, you can almost go in completely open world sections, running around and deciding where to build your base. But with that comes even more dangers. So you may want to build or construct more of this area to make it your kind of home base, your first base before progressing. However, if you're pretty confident in the game, you've got used to it quite quickly, you've got a lot of resources on you, you've got lots of dried meats, lots of weapons and stuff like that, you may want to consider just building a small, tiny little save place like this and then moving on and finding somewhere next in the next big section. This whole area is still kind of like the tutorial section, just getting you used to things. You won't find as many dangers, although you still can come across creatures like the lynxes or the cubs or some sort of cheetah. It's definitely a cat and you will come across some tribes people in this zone eventually too. But for sure you don't come across them dangers as much as you will in the next stage. Definitely go ahead and build at least one save slot here in this zone, but don't panic or try building more of the complicated ones. Just build the very first one you get. Don't forget also that sleeping doesn't save your game. You do need to click save after you've woken up. And it sounds obvious, but save often. It, it turns so quickly in this game that you might get infected, not realize it, and then all of a sudden you're dead and you start a spiral of problems and issues because you saved your game recently and you've only got maybe 30 seconds to try and find a cure or an item. So always save and try and save always. Make sure you've got no problems, no infections. Also, cure all of them before you go ahead and save the game. Craft as many weapons and items or tools as you can, as this often unlocks new items for you to try. It's kind of survival 101, but you should always be experimenting with brand new items to see if you can craft and make anything new. The only exception to that is big complicated bases. I would say really make sure you've got the perfect position and you're confident in that base being something you're going to be coming back to. This starting area will be part of the main game for quite a while, so it is safe to build a base here. And it does come with the hammock, which is better to sleep on than sleeping on the ground. But you are still open to some dangers, so don't think this is just completely safe. If you keep getting infected, have loads of problems, your sanity level is going to increase. And this causes hallucinations that can damage you and ultimately kill you. So keep your sanity in check by eating certain foods, like this mushroom. 
as well as Brazil nuts and the Monstera fruit. Pretty much any spoiled food as well as raw meats can increase your insanity, so you don't really want to have that happening. Always cook your food. 10 tips under 10. Check out the rest of the guides that are incoming. Hopefully this helps. Until next time, laters.